to sales. Hi everyone, my name is Marc Alvarez. I'm the co-owner of SIPS in Barcelona. I study biology in the University of Barcelona, but finally I find my place behind the bar. The first SIP is the first thing that you remember when you drink a cocktail that was prepared special for you. That's the reason why in SIPS uh, we design a space that is completely open, it's a wide open space to feel connected with the guests, to get more information about what they want to drink, to get them the best experience possible in this hospitality world. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to this webinar around creativity and how to have a proper way uh, to create efficiently. Sometimes the process of creating a new menu or a cocktail or a competition is left to uh, last minute. So today we will have a uh, Mark that will take us on his journey and share the best advice to organize, create and innovate. First of all, my name is Cristina Monaco. I am the brand ambassador for Italicus in France, and I will be co-hosting this seminar with the one and only Marc Alvarez, who is the co-owner of uh, Sips Barcelona in Spain. This bar opened in uh, uh, two years ago, one of the already one of the world's 50 best bars. So congratulations. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> How are you? All good, Cristina. Enjoying uh, nearly this uh, summer that we have in Barcelona because uh, okay. we are in February, but uh, still it's a very shiny and uh, warm uh, weather. So very good, very good. And uh, it's a real pleasure, Cristina, to, to share you um, our uh, knowledge uh, of tips and uh, our creativity tips. So it's going to be, I think, a, a nice chat uh, from nearly one hour. So, so I think it's going to be very useful for everyone. Thank you very much, Mark. So, uh, would you tell us more about you? Where do you come from? And uh... okay, perfect, Cristina. I'm I'm from Barcelona. My name is Mark Alvarez. Uh, I'm uh, 38 years old. Um, I was studying biology at the University of Barcelona, so I don't come. I don't belong to the hospitality industry since the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. But well, finally, I was uh, working behind the bar just to pay my studies. So uh, finally, I, I stay in the bar. That was uh, okay. a real, uh, that I, I really felt that was my real place. So it's now nearly 20 years working behind the bar. It's not that bad. And uh, well, I was working uh, for uh, different bars and restaurants in Barcelona. Uh, probably one of the most uh, well-known uh, jobs was um, uh, to be the beverage manager of Albert and Fran Adria here in Barcelona, in the, all the restaurants uh, that, that they have here. And uh, well, finally, I just decided to open SIPS with uh, the one and only Simone Caporale, my business partner. And well, we are happy to, to be here in Barcelona and to finally be open after all this happens. Uh, so that's, that's more or less my career. Nice. So just for the audience for uh, today, thanks for joining us. And also, if you have any questions for Mark, don't hesitate to ask questions in the comment side that you have uh, just below. Mark, would you like to uh, start the presentation? Yes, for sure. Um, before that, I'm going to do a toast with you, uh, Christina, because I have oh, yeah, my... Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm it's prepared. Italicus. Uh, top up with Prosecco is my favorite drink with Italicus. I know it's simple, but it's tasty and it's okay. elegant. So that's uh, the perfect uh, drink for me. So, so let so me share you uh, uh, my type of drink with Italicus. Simple uh, is the best for me. So one part of Italicus, two parts of tonic. And of course, the best way to have it uh, for aperitivo with big olive. So one sip, one olive, one sip, one olive. At the third great combination, one. great combination. In fact, um, I, I really enjoy the, the savory and, and citrusy, thing, uh, citrusy things at the same time. In yeah. Spain, we have a few recipes to pickle olives with uh, lemon peel that um, maybe if I have time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain you later. <laughs> okay, fine. Because the there's, there's, there's a lot of things, to, there's a lot of things to, to talk, Christina, because we need to inspire these guys um, 
to to be the most uh, creative bartenders uh, for the Italicus competition. So um, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, one intense hour to explain all that we need to explain. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Let's be creative then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. <clears throat> well, let's start. Um, of course, uh, creativity is um, something that is a, a very complex concept to understand, no? Because what is cre creative, no? What what's what's to be um, or what's supposed to be um, this this word? In fact, it's it's uh, very easy. Uh, it's very easy to understand. Sometimes it's very difficult to achieve. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Uh, to be creative is when you just want to make always something new in your uh, career. I mean, it's something that you want always to be focused on to make the things different. And I think that uh, Create Creativity, that is the name of uh, today's presentation, uh, probably is going to be um, a presentation to to encourage the people that it's not that difficult to be creative. It's only something that we need to be focused and uh, we need to just work a little bit on it because uh, it's not it's not impossible to be very creative. It's just a matter of how work out we do <laughs> in the in the in the creativity area. No? So that's the most um, important important thing to to know. That um, well, in fact, creativity is just to be focused on make things different. Okay, and uh, you can apply this in a in a in a very high range of things. Uh, of course. Uh, cocktails can be one of the of of these uh, things, but um, we're gonna take uh, on the we're gonna be back on this later on. But uh, sometimes we are only focused on um, uh, make cocktails, and sometimes we need to create a path more than create recipes. So it's got, it's a it's a term that I'm I'm gonna be back uh, later on, as I said, because um, there's a few important things that we need to know about. Okay, so if we go with the presentation. Um, we're gonna um, well just um, introduce a little bit myself and 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 the concept of tip that we have behind uh, here. Um, this gentleman and I, uh, Simone Caporale, uh, is my business partner for nearly uh, one year. So we were having together the idea to build a bar that represents a bar, a place where the people can enjoy, can have fun, and of course, drink tasty drinks. That's the most important thing for us, that the, all the drink needs to be tasty. And of course, there's uh, innovations and something that needs to be really uh, incredible and Instagram uh, and to put it on Instagram. But the most important thing is to say so um, behind that, we have a lot of techniques, a lot of creativity, a lot of blah, 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 blah. But um, it's only something that just supports the taste. OK, so that, that's something that uh we want to just explain because sometimes um it's it's not uh, happening in in everywhere okay the second thing is uh we were focused on the idea if we go to the next slide you will see um our bar is a very tiny bar in the center of barcelona uh and the idea behind was uh, to make uh, high culture cocktails to a preta porte ambient no? so sometimes um high creativity and 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 um High uh, kind of high standard cocktails are always uh, focused on these places that charge you a lot of money, and you need to be very focused on the drink. And the experience is only talking with the bartender. And no, 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 tips needs to be something fresh, casual, easy, comfort, hundred percent. But uh, having behind um, the most uh, advanced techniques, and of course, an incredible um, taste. No, so that's that's a little bit the idea behind tips and. Um, we were using a lot of the techniques of creativity that uh, we're going to talk uh, today. So um, the 80, 90 percent of creativity of SIPS was built with the techniques and with the system that uh, we're going to talk um, in, in a few minutes. OK, so if we continue with the presentation, um, I want to 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 start um, explaining a little bit the difference between creativity and innovation because are not exactly the same. We use it. Sometimes a lot of people is using these uh, two words uh, in the same concept, and it's, it's not that true because creativity is when something new appears in 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 a, in a world, but innovation is when somebody pays for that. <laughs> that is quite, completely yeah. different because mm -hmm. uh, you can be the most uh, creative bartender of the world, but if you are not able to just put this on a table or, or put this on a bar, 
probably uh, your uh, efficiency in uh, creativity and innovation it's not that good. So we are going to talk today um, of both things because, of course, you need to be creative and we are going to give you a few tips to, to make it. But also, we need to be uh, able to innovate, to make these things happen. Okay, so that's, a, that's also a very good tip um, to, to create in, in two paths. The first path, is to create something that is really gonna it, it's gonna change the world, but at the same time, um, need, you need to be creative to make these things happen in your bar or in your masterclass or whatever you can do or whatever you you do with your creativity, just to be sure that you are achieving uh, the level of creativity that that, uh, that you need and to be very useful because sometimes um, we can have a lot of draws in a in a in an iPad or in a notebook. But these, these draws are only draws, are not the uh, facts. So um, that's a good connection, and uh, we, you, you need to be very efficient to connect these these two worlds. Okay. So let's continue a little bit. Um, of course, there's a lot of a few people, a few a very few uh, um, talented people that they are able to change the world. And here we have a few examples: Ferran Adrià, Steve Jobs, Elton John, Pablo Picasso. Both uh, all, all of them. Uh, they have a talent. They were special people on the right place, on the right moment, okay? But they, they were special people, or they are special people, uh, because they have a talent for what they were doing or they are doing. So the thing is, we can be the new Steve Jobs of uh, the mythology world. Well, yes, we can, but we need to work with... We, we need to um, work for that, and it's not going to be an, an easy an easy path. It's not going to be an easy way. Uh, I really like this uh, sentences of uh, Pablo Picasso that says, "Los malos artistas copian los buenos roban." It means that uh, the good artists just um, the, the bad artists just uh, copy. The good artists just stole the concept, no? Stole this path that I was telling to you. And of course, it's going to be one of the items that we are going to be back today. So. If we are not Steve Jobs, if we are not Pablo Picasso, if we are not Ferran Adria, what we can do? Okay, so that's going to be the last half an hour that uh, we're going to create. Uh, let's go for the next one, please. Um, of course, now that we know that uh, we are not born to create, we are not very special people, or, or I mean, I try to don't uh, put this on myself, um, which which is going to be the path to, way to, to, to achieve this kind of creativity, creativity nirvana? So very easy. We're gonna do a very quick um, um, parallelism with the with the gym. Okay, if we we'll go to the next one, uh, you will see as how the gym works. Creativity is a muscle, so it means that we can train it. Okay, of course, um, there's a few people that uh, when they go to the gym and uh, they are uh, they are just training three days and they are eating pizza and hamburgers every day and they look fit and they look amazing because they have this kind of, uh, you know, natural behavior. But of course, there's uh, a few people like me, for example, that I go to train six uh, days a week and I'm uh, eating lettuce and tuna fish every day. But, uh, well, the results uh, are not uh, an, a brilliant thing. So it's just a matter of work. It's just training. It's training, 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 training. Of course, maybe you are not uh, um, um, a very uh, amazing, uh, creative nirvana every day, but you can reach it, you can reach it, okay? So that's the first important thing. We can reach a nice creativity in Nirvana if we train nearly, nearly every day, okay? So let's go for the next one. Um, I'm gonna give you, like, uh, for me, the three main tips uh, that needs to be done uh, nearly, nearly every week. And to be honest, it's something that I really uh, do because it's something that it really helps me to be Constant, you know, it's something. It's a, it's a way uh, of um, filling a, a glass with drops. It's not something to uh, just open the open the the water and 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 have it uh, fill it up till the top. It's just a matter of passion and work, passions and work. Create, create, and create. What I mean with that is you cannot uh, expect to be the most amazing bartender just creating one cocktail and. The first cocktail that you make is going to be the greatest cocktail of the of the history of the mixology because guys to be honest this is not going to happen so just we need to work with that um 
just make a, a, a quick um, a quick idea about, for example, a, a, imagine a writer, Cristina. Okay, so imagine a writer that is writing um, a year, two hundred and fifty pages. Two hundred and fifty pages is a book, isn't it? But the thing is that if these two hundred and fifty pages, probably, if you are not the most talented writer, the eighty percent are going to be ugly. Are going to be something that it's not really good. And the 20% is going to be the genius. It's going to be what you really something are going to change the, the idea of books or the idea behind what you're working with. So you cannot expect working, uh, sorry, uh, making uh, 250 pages if you want to make uh, an amazing 250 pages. So, which is very clear, you need to write 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 because this 20% of the great uh, uh, the, it will be the great part of what you of what your creativity achieves. So the 20% of 1,000 or, or 2,000 will be these 200 or 300 uh, pages that you will need to make the most amazing book of your life. So that's exactly the same with bartending. If you create just five cocktails, these five cocktails probably the, these five are not going to be brilliant. Probably only two are going to be brilliant. So the thing is, what you need to do is just create, just put the, uh, uh, um, uh, a white paper in, in front of you every week and try to get a pen and write, 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 create, create, create. But make it every single week, every single week. If not, the problem is that you're not going to be achieving the, the, um, the nice amount of drinks that you need or the nice um, uh, amount of ideas that you need. So just uh, lose the fear about creating and just, to start creating right now. Second thing, anticipation. Create and then apply. You cannot wait till the day before to present the, the, the recipe to the to the challenge. You cannot wait to the week before of the uh, of the changing menu because probably this pressure that you will have, it's not going to be able to think you in a clear way. So what you need to do is just create with any sense, without, with, without any purpose, without any idea to, that you need to present these cocktails to anyone to, in anywhere. So that's going to be the only way that you're going to be able to create an amazing thing because you're going to lose the fear, you're going to lose the pressure that you need uh, um, to be efficient and, and, and presenting drinks. So that's a second important idea. And the third one, it's going to be fit creativity. What does it mean? It means that you need to be inspired for other categories, for other worlds. Because in bartending, we used to copy chefs or copy pastry chefs. And it's very easy. You can go to the pastry of your, uh, of your restaurant, of your bar, and just copy a recipe of a meringue or a recipe of a cider or a recipe of anything, of a sauce, of a sweet sauce, whatever you want. But this is only copy. You're not, you're not being inspired for this chef. You're being just coping the recipe and apply it or, or just trying to adapt to, to the mixology world. Why don't you understand how they create, how they, um, how is the system of the creativity of chefs? But maybe, probably, you just need to be inspired for other categories that are not just next to uh, the bar. Probably, why don't you go to an architect? Why don't you go to an interior designer? Why don't you go to a graphic designer? How they think, how they create his own creativity. That's an amazing way to understand path, but not to copy the path, it's just to create your own path. Guys, you need to start thinking on your own way and try to make your own system. And that's gonna be creating also your DNA of bartender, because you will have a clear path and the results are going to be consistent. So that's uh, three, the three, the three um, uh, main tips that I can give you uh, as a training that you need to do nearly every week if you can. I know that uh, we are all busy, but I think that um, are three very important um, things to, to take in mind. Okay. So we go to the next one. Um, this is, I, I love this picture because um, it explains a, a few things. Of course, when we think in creativity, we are all thinking in something like that. It's like very, you know, bohemic uh, kind of thing, just to uh, lay down and imagine a creative uh, thing, blah, blah, blah. 
and it's more probably related uh, on the colorful side of the of the slide but we can be creative in a lot in a lot in a lot of things that are not probably uh, art or uh, paint or uh, something that is a little bit more artistic imagine for example uh, doctors that uh, they need to find a solution for a disease or uh, maybe a physical guy that is uh, just trying to solve a physical problem uh, even um, maths can be creative no and that's a, a very important thing to take in mind. Creativity is in everywhere. A creativity, and you can be creative in nearly every, every, every single thing. So this brain need help us to understand that the creativity has like a, a very bohemic side. But you need also to understand that then you need to apply, and you need a recipe, and you need to calculate the bricks degrees that you have in your side of because you need to be. Uh, very balanced on your drink. So there's a, a com the combination of the two things. And you know what? The, the best thing of this uh, slide is that we have, because I think that everybody of, that we are here, we have it uh, one, uh, we have a brain. And the brain is the most amazing creative machine ever invented. Because imagine the first time that somebody thinks, wow, why don't we can just fly? Uh, we can how we can build a thing that let us fly. That's an amazing. That changed the way and the perception of the perception of the world. Or maybe imagine somebody that one day just took one thing. Why don't we can communicate in distance and create the phone? So these people have the same creative machine as you have the brain because. Nearly every human has one. Uh, so that's a very important thing to understand. Just we need to, we have the muscle, we have the machine. Just we need to start using it on the proper way. Okay, so that's important thing. Uh, if you go to the next one, um, this slide it, it's always remembering that how the creativity uh, can, can change, no? the world of uh, the companies. For example, here we have the headquarters of Google. Uh, of course, creativity is always related with these uh, people that is, uh, well, trying to uh, make uh, this uh, kind of a new uh, ideas or a kind of, um, well, this, this amazing um, new world. Of course, all we can do it, they have an advantage that is to have the most amazing creativity lab that uh, you can imagine, for example, in Google. Uh, if you go to the next one, uh, here you have some, some slides. Of course, uh, we have uh, we, we we don't have any slide in SIP. So uh, the thing is that uh, we can just uh, try to make this happen in 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 our own in our own uh, bar in our own uh, restaurant. Okay. So if you don't have a slide, don't worry. I, I I even have it here one. So don't worry. If you don't have a slide, you can also be creative, because probably our uh, daylight creativity is gonna be more related with the picture that we have in the next slide. That is this our uh, reality uh, in Mark, can you hear me? Hola. Yes. <laughs> well, I think that I had uh, some connection problems. Hello. That's fine. We we can hear you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Te technical technical problems. Sorry. <laughs> so let me ask you um, one question, for example. So. If I share my experience with you in terms of uh, creativity, work and wellness on a daily basis, I have a like a kind of morning routine. So I wake up, for example, 10 minutes before the alarm rings and then uh, I do some positive affirmation, stretch my body and drink hot water and lemon. This sets my energy for the day and my mental uh, energy also. Of course. Of course, of course, um, cre creativity is all related about this. I mean, it's something about to have a routine. It's something about to understand that we have uh, a lot of ways to um, achieve this creativity nirvana. What I'm telling, to, to be honest, Christina, is to understand the way that, of course, to be working with Google and to be uh, one of the um, a creator in, in, in Google, of course, it's, it's an amazing job because it, it really happens uh, every day that you go to, um, to a place where 
you maximize your way to create. Yeah. But the problem is, and what I'm going to tell you later on with the, all these uh, slides that are beginning, uh, are, are coming, is uh, this, um, this kind of um, way to understand that we are not only focused on create, we are uh, focusing on uh, maybe to do the sheet rota for the guys of the team. We are looking for the numbers of the place. We need to change the menu. We need to um, to have the technical solutions for the problems of the bar. So there's a lot, a lot of things involved on the uh, on the on the creativity um, on the on the daily creativity. So you need to be focused. The time that you have, you need to be sure that you are um, being the most efficient uh, in the in the creativity. Um, okay. So that's more or less what the was this screen. So I, uh, that's um, something that I want just to to just to put here on the top because um, sometimes it's not that easy uh, to be a, a, a creative bartender because there's a lot of issues around you that you need to that you need to solve. Okay, so that that's the idea. <clears throat> okay, see so if we go to the next one. Okay, hybridation. Uh, that's an example uh, of a creativity technique that we use to make one of the signature drinks that we prepare here at Sips with Italicus. I think it's, for me, it's one of the most amazing drinks that we have because it's very fresh, easy to understand, but has a technical um, background that is amazing. Hybridation, if we go to the next one, um, it's a, well, a creativity technique that says that sometimes one plus one is not two. Maybe it's one, maybe it's three, maybe it's ten. So it's a it's a creative process where two disciplines with a different background uh, finds uh, or ends uh, in a in a final background. Okay. For example, if we go to the next one, what we are explaining with this cocktail is uh, the scropino. We have uh, the classical uh, look and feel of a scropino. So it's uh, sauvet. In this case, top it up with prosecco. But in this case, uh, the ice cream or the sauvet. It's not uh, made with lemon. It's made with an Americano cocktail. So we have a little bit of a uh, bitter, a little bit of a mood, and we have uh, raspberry and uh, Italicus. So what we have is just to have a little bit of, uh, of uh, citrusy notes. We have um, raspberry notes. That sometimes raspberry is a fresh puree, so it means it has a, a, a nice acidity. Um, and of course, bitter and vermouth are working together to make uh, the mouth feeling sensation that we need in a aperitivo cocktail. But this kind of esbagliato uh, cocktail goes with the look and feel of uh, the esgropino. So, in fact, the common ingredient is the prosecco. The look and feel is from esgropino, and the flavors and the ingredients are from the, uh, uh, the esbagliato. So we are combining together a few things that are just finally one. So that's the, the, the clear idea about the hybridation, to make a few different things just happen in one thing, okay? So that's what we call hybridation. And that's an amazing way, guys, to be honest, if, you, if you're if um, you a, a, um, a lover of the of classic uh, mixology or classic uh, recipes, it's a nice way to just combine two classic cocktails in one. And it's very useful to be more creative, to have a twist on a classic that is two classics at the same time. And uh, of course, uh, you have plenty of creativity and plenty of ingredients to, to combine, okay? Nice. Uh, I think that the next slide is the recipe of the of the, of the scropino. So well, in fact, uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, the most important thing is that uh, we do this uh, cocktail with uh, liquid nitrogen. Of course, liquid, liquid nitrogen is a very nice, fancy thing to do uh, in front of the guests because it's foam and smoky and all this kind of thing. But to be uh, honest with you, the most important thing that we use the, the liquid nitrogen is because you cannot freeze alcohol in a freezer. So we need to use this technique uh, by physic law because we are not able to make the same uh, cocktail just freezing it in a, in, a, in a sorbet machine. So that's a, well, the idea, to, to be honest, uh, is uh, what? Um, a little bit of um, making uh, a technique, um, of course, shiny and nice for Instagram, but also we can just uh, make um, uh, something a little bit more, you know, 
fancy and funny for the for the guests, but it's, uh, it's, it's also interesting. Okay, if we go to the next one. Okay, the virtual palette. Um, it's something that um, I really just to encourage all the people to to just to be trained on the on the on the palette profile because we can just be more efficient just uh, having a nice library of ingredients in our brain and in our tongue because uh, it's our uh, um, way to 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 get this information uh, getting inside. Um, I don't know where the presentation is, but the next slide is going to be, uh, for me, the most important thing um, to understand about the virtual palette. Drink, drink, and drink. It doesn't mean that we need to be drunk, guys. Huh? Because uh, when I always uh, explain this, uh, I, I don't want any misunderstood. What I'm telling with this is just our library, our code sequence uh, of, of accords that Elton John has, are flavors, are, are, are ingredients. So try to taste and retaste and taste and retaste every single thing that you have in front of you. That's the most important thing because you then you will be able just to combine all these um, flavors and all this, uh, all this knowledge to be sure that you are very efficient on the moment of creating. And of course, you are um, a good bartender making connections between ingredients, of course. Uh, sometimes even in uh, at night or, or when we finish or maybe sometimes when we have a, a little bit of time, we even just retaste Italicus. Of course, we drink it a thousand times, but it's not something about drinking, something about to, to, to get information every single time that you taste one thing. Okay, so uh, for me, it's very important to do a right tasting program to 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 make it uh, just maybe if you can every week or every month just to be sure that you are always um, trained on 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 your uh, on your sense of taste. Okay. Okay. So we go to the next one. The brainstorm. Well, for me, this is one of the most uh, useful uh, creativity techniques. But it's the most, um, the, 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 probably for me, the worst uh, used uh, creativity technique because every single person knows what is a brainstorm. But it's very difficult that you find a creativity team that it really uh, works with a brainstorm on the correct path, okay? Because sometimes we use, uh, if, if we go to the next slide, um, Sometimes when, when, when we want to uh, do a, a brainstorm session, we try to put as a topic a very complex thing. And the brainstorm, it's not ready for that. It's not something that is gonna uh, be able to solve real big problems, okay? So the, the idea of, of, of the brainstorm is first of all, try to achieve or try to have the idea of the big problem that you want to achieve. For example, I want to win the Italicus competition. That's not the topic of a brainstorm. That's the main uh, problem that you need to solve. Then what you're gonna do with this main problem is what you see on the, on the, on the left side of the screen is to split the problem in different small problems. Because if you just put this problem on the, on the brainstorm uh, procedure, it's not gonna work. It's too big. It's not uh, um, affordable. If you just split these problems in different small problems, then the brainstorm procedure is going to start working to make solving all these uh, little problems. Okay, so that's the main the, the main important uh, the main important part. Of course, uh, you cannot invent something that is already invented. That's clear, Christina, right? We are agree yeah. with that. So um, the idea is the next. Just try to get the most uh, amount of existing information about the problem or the topic that you are trying to work, okay? So uh, just to be sure that you have all the information uh, um, um, to be just uh, ready for this session of uh, creativity. Um, and the second step will be uh, to 
prepare the, the brainstorm the brainstorm in, in itself probably is the most well known part of the, of all the system but it's just to sit down on a round table to start thinking or start or start saying uh, different words that maybe it's related with the, the with the topic that we are talking about but for, I highly recommend to just use inner part, uh, um, inner stuff from the from the bar. So probably all the bartenders can be involved. But also, it's a very nice thing and it's a very nice exercise to just invite a few people that are not bartenders. Maybe is the kitchen porter, maybe is the marketing uh, person, maybe is the owner, maybe is just the guy that is serving coffees just next door because they are going to have no dogmas because you have it and you're going to have in the session people uh, putting words uh, in this uh, brainstorm uh, of words that are not limited by anything and that's very very important okay so that's a, a very a very nice tip that um, i used to recommend in in every single in every single session of brainstorm and of course to start saying creative things, sometimes it's difficult. Um, we were talking about that the creativity is like the gym you need to train. And before train, what you do? You warm up. You warm up a little bit yourself to just don't get pain or don't do anything wrong. Um, we need to just warm up a little bit on the brainstorm procedure. And what you, how we can make it? It's very easy. Just try to do a, a little mini brainstorm before the real brainstorm with something silly, something stupid, something that is not really uh, helpful and anything, just to laugh a little bit, to relax a little bit the people. Probably all the bartenders were late night, uh, uh, they were um, sleeping uh, late at night and we are in the morning, uh, just we get uh, one coffee and maybe breakfast. So people is lazy and the brain needs a little bit of warm upping to just be 100% creative. Um, in the next slide, uh, I'm gonna present you uh, um, a tip that I always use. Uh, <laughs> that uh, it's something very interesting. This is a toilet seat, right, Christina? So I guess yes. <laughs> that's that's a very nice thing. If we just we go to a creativity session and as a warm up, you buy one of these in the in the supermarket and just you put it on top of the table and say, guys, I need. 15 or 20 different things that how we can just use a toilet seat um, uh, as a, as a warm up of the of the creativity session. Okay, so that's that's a very interesting thing because uh, we're gonna see now a video of uh, some artists from Barcelona. They uh, they do mimics and uh, it's a real brainstorm. They use this technique to create a gag to create something funny. You can be creative, even making people laugh. So imagine how the brainstorm is useful, even for an actor that needs to prepare a sketch. So if you don't mind, Christina, it's gonna be it's, it's a little bit long, but I think it's very nice to to see how many different ways they, they can use the toilet seat uh, to be creative. And something that guys use it in your brainstorm procedures uh, when you start with your team because it's going to be very funny and it's going to be very useful to make the people just be focused on the real problem that you need to solve. Let's go with the video. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to share the screen if you don't mind. Yeah, that's it. We can see it perfectly. <laughs> okay, uh, now it's playing, right? Yeah. You sing it.
Well, as you can see, uh, the, the video was uh, just trying to explain a little bit how we can uh, just use a toilet seat to uh, imagine a few uh, different things how to how to play with. No, so imagine that you just start with your team. Uh, you uh, start to um, ask for uh, how they are gonna are gonna use it, and finally you put the, this video. Okay, so just it's a way to understand how we can be more creative and how we can just uh being oh <laughs> hello <Sorry. laughs> how we can be um how we can be uh, just uh, on the proper mood and and try to make our brain um still uh, being ready uh for the for the final presentation of the of the brain okay let me so, ask you one question mark how do you yeah? find this whole process to sips today how do Say you again sorry how do you apply the whole process ah, that you just described, yeah. SIPS. Well, it's it's very easy. Um, to be honest, Christina, I'm gonna ask the uh, answer this question in the next two slides because um, yeah. we're gonna do um, the next creativity technique. In fact, it's not a creative technique; it's a it's a study technique. They they call it the mind mapping. Um, we used to work with the mind mapping to achieve all the items that we need to to achieve for a bar or for a cocktail or even for a recipe. Um, what we do uh, on the brainstorm is not just to apply the concept of uh, building SIPs, it's just try to uh, start, uh, if, if you go to the next one, you will see um, how the ma mind mapping is. So it's a, it, it's a, it's a it's, um, way to uh, connect information uh, that is related one to each other to have like a, a, a graphic um, idea about all the items that are related with a, with a process, concept, bar, or whatever. If we go mm -hmm. to the next one, you will see our own mind mapping uh, tips that we uh, work uh, every single time that we uh, need to prepare a drink. So uh, we are having a few items about glassware, garnishing, flavor, tradition and history, uh, own uh, DNA of the bar. So we have a lot of ingredients here to make a cocktail. What we put on the, in the front of the um, of the um, brainstorm is not the global concept. What we put in the front and we use as a topic of every single brainstorm is just every single gray dot that you see here, because it's very difficult that we can sorry we can achieve the, the the a good result with just putting the global concept on it. Just we need to be sure that. The, the the item that we're working with is just uh, enough small to be achieved and to make something that is going to be useful for the creativity session. So that's, that's um, a little bit the answer of the question. We just prepare the uh, mind mapping to be able to just work in different creative, creativity techniques with uh, the with the different topics. That's That's the main idea behind that. Okay. Um, you see the, the next um, the next uh, slide is also a, a small mind mapping that we have any time that we work with the taste of the drink. So we have also uh, different items to be sure that we are uh, achieving uh, before having uh, the final recipe or the final uh, liquid uh, liquid idea. Okay. So that's more or less the the idea behind the mind mapping. It's just a way just to have in mind all the items that you need to have a complete uh, a complete um, uh, uh, concept that you that you want to present in in your bar in your um, challenge or whatever. Okay, so uh, it's a very easy way to to understand uh, all the you know all the processes that are involved in the in the creativity of a drink. 
Because you go to the next one. Okay. Um, just to make a little bit of summary of all, uh, we go on to the next uh, one. Um, it's going to be very clear that we talk about dogma, about mind mapping, about hybridation, about uh, virtual palette, but how we can just put all these things together. Going to the next one, you will see um, that uh, when we have a concept with no structure, we need to just be sure that we have the creativity techniques to have a structured concept to just finally, with the virtual palette, you are able to get the final product. So just start with an idea. Maybe this idea is uh, a little bit uh, um, cluttered, and uh, sometimes this idea has um, a clear endpoint where you want to go, but with the brainstorm, with hybridation and mind mapping, you're able to combine these three techniques to be sure that this concept is going to finally arrive to a, a final destination on a, on a good way. Okay, so that's more or less the idea behind the summary. So just start to um, with the white paper is where you have the concept and then use the creativity techniques and your um, uh, virtual pilot, that is your knowledge, to get the final product. It's the, the, three, the three clear uh, steps on creativity to be quite efficient and quite effective uh, creating. I think okay, that's nice. pretty I guess much Mark, um, Most of the audience of today are taking part of uh, the Art of Italicus Aperitivo Challenge. Yeah. And you have to come with an Aperitivo uh, cocktail for the competition inspired mm -hmm. by art. I get this model of uh, creativity, brainstorming, and all the topics you have explained today would be a great suggestion to them to uh, compete mm -hmm. in the competition. What will be the last advice to those bartenders entering the art of Italicus this year? Well, um, I'm going to give to these guys and ladies uh, some uh, homeworks at home. Um, we're going to give you one important tip that uh, comes from a book that I just uh, have just next to me um, quite often. Um, the most important thing is to have a purpose, to have a why. Um, don't think about winning the competition. Just try to make something that is really uh, changing the way that you understand the thing. That's, that's the, more, the most important thing. Because if you just want to win a competition, it's a very short time for post. And it, this is not going to be something that is going to change the mind. It's not going to be a thing that is going to change the world. So when you go to a competition, you need to be more than a cocktail. You need to be more than a bartender. You need to present a concept, a way to understand, and a way to believe that what you are doing is a real, real huge thing. That's the most uh, important um, tip uh, to, to give to these uh, bartenders. Thank you, Mark. And last no but not least, um, the best Italicus bar artist this year will have the incredible opportunity to get a mentorship in SIPS Barcelona mm -hmm. with yourself and the team. Yeah, yeah. Can't say us something on this mentorship. Well, this mentorship is very easy. Uh, to be honest, the winner will be with us nearly one week. So this week is going to be intense. And uh, this week, um, they, uh, they are going to experiment uh, every single thing that we do here, the, um, the prep, the creativity, uh, the service. So it's going to be part of the SIPS team. And I think it's going to be quite inspiring, to be honest, because uh, there's a lot of uh, things to explain inside. Uh, today, I only had an hour to explain a little bit how we do the things, but uh, it will be great uh, when somebody is, is here uh, and, and watching all what is happening here behind the scenes. It's going to be it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. I think I'm going to apply to the competition myself then. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, thank you very much for your time. It was a Thanks great so much. to co-host this seminar with you. I'm raising my Italicus and Tonic to uh, everyone who joined the webinar today. And just as remain a reminder, Art of Italicus Aperitivo Challenge deadline to register is next week. So feel free to Ooh. register on the link we will put just below uh, this seminar. The seminar will be on replay for a few weeks, so don't hesitate to uh, watch it again or just to uh, share it uh, with your team at work. So take care, Mark. Thank you very much. Yeah. Before we leave, Christina, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the last, yeah, 
um, I want to just uh, share with you some um, some books that uh, it really inspired me. Uh, and two of these books uh, talks about the uh, concept and creativity, and the other two books um, works about efficiency. Okay, uh, this is a little present that I give to you. Um, if you have the opportunity to 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 get these books and read a little bit, because um, that's a way to understand how um, sometimes you are not inspired only by bartenders or other bartenders, or you are not inspired by chef. You can be inspired uh, for many, 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 many different things. And uh, well, we have um, the first book that I want to to um, just uh, mention is the Creative Brain. Yeah, your Creative Brain is uh, an amazing book that is gonna give you tips and exercises to make your brain more creative. So uh, please uh, read it uh, uh, because it's a very nice, nice uh, essay about creativity by uh, Shelley Carlson. Um, that was um, um, uh, a neurobiologist uh, from, from, from uh, I think it's the state. Uh, but well, please, uh, need, you, you need to read this book. Uh, start with why, with uh, the one and only Simon Sinek, uh, to be sure that you are uh, going to on, on your right way and your own path. And uh, to be honest, it's a very short book, very easy to, to read, but uh, I think it's going to be uh, quite nice to for the bartenders because uh, it's gonna be really inspiring without talking about liquid so that or creativity so it's gonna be nice and um, atomic habits and getting things done from james clear and david allen both are um, books that is gonna uh, help you to manage your time very important because sometimes we can be you can be the most amazing uh, bartender but if you don't uh, follow your you, if you don't build your uh, own path if you are not able to achieve all your um, all your um, items uh, probably uh, your creativity is not going to be finally uh, translated into innovation that was the first sentence that we were talking about uh, this presentation okay so uh, to be sure that you're very creative read the uh, books about it and then uh, read also books to achieve this creativity nirvana and make it happen in your own path Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks for Thank sharing your passion and knowledge. And see you soon you. around uh, Italicus in Spain or anywhere in the world. Take care of you and uh, salute. So Cheers, much. everyone. Thanks. Salute, salute. Ciao. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.